The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday, on which we celebrate Epiphany, is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible, or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. In these opening chapters of Matthew's Gospel, we see the heavenly and earthly powers at work. In chapter 1, as we reflected on the as we reflected on on the fourth Sunday of Advent, Matthew spent the first 17 verses of his gospel explaining Jesus' genealogy and how Jesus is of the royal line of King David. Then, as the birth narrative begins, an angel announces Jesus, the Messiah's birth, to Joseph in a dream. And now, here in chapter 2 in our reading assigned for today, it is a star in the heavens that announces the birth to the wise men. The wise men follow the star to find the king of the Jews, and they do so by visiting King Herod in the biggest city in the area that the star leads them to. These opening chapters of Matthew's gospel are powerfully prophetic, cosmic, and political, and they set the scene for the story of Jesus Christ who will remake the worldly and the heavenly order. Today's reading shows even as a helpless infant, Jesus, the Messiah, by his mere existence, was challenging those in power by the promise of hope he brought. So great was the threat of the good news to the earthly powers of the world that King Herod, who held the greatest earthly power at the time, would even be driven to become callously murderous in verse 16. Those in earthly power, both religious and political in Jesus' day, were so afraid that the people might find hope in the child that the stars and the prophecies heralded, a hope that the brokenness of relationships that had grown between people and God would be repaired. Those in earthly power feared the hope that God's true authority would be reestablished and reasserted in this child, laying bare the deceptions and manipulations they had used to shape the world's systems to their advantage and their power would be destroyed. Of course, this unfortunately is a repeating chorus in the song of our earthly lives. The names and shapes of the earthly powerful change, but their fear of losing earthly power and authority overshadows the desire God has placed in all our hearts for justice and compassion for all people. They instead seek to separate us by seeding hate, fear, and stoking anger with the intention of creating divisions among us. Too many people around us seem to have their own selfish intentions. Marketers, salespeople, politicians, and even religious leaders too often seem to have a product or a way of thinking that they want us to buy into that strengthens their positions. And we've all probably been fooled, at least briefly, by their skilled marketing or by their polished and compelling words. Like Herod's words to the wise men, which sounded like just the right things to say, but underneath those enticing words hid his selfish and evil intentions. But God, in Jesus, provides us with another path. In the story we read today, the wise men following the star embodies God's announcement to our world of a new, hope-filled path. They see the star in the heavens, and they are drawn to its light. It's important to note that God's people had become so ensnared by the brokenness of their times that the only ones looking for the Messiah's birth, for this earth-changing hope, were these foreign magi from the east. It was only these very un-Jewish wise men who traveled a huge distance to come and pay homage to this newborn baby of hope. By God's grace, they were drawn to Christ. Now there's a churchy joke 
that goes like this, that the wise men were the very first and very last men ever invited to a baby shower because they brought the most impractical gifts. But they did come. They were drawn to Christ. And to complete their well-intended journey, after they pay homage to Jesus the Messiah, they are guided by God's goodness to not fall for Herod's deception and do not report back to him as he asked them, which helps the infant Jesus and his family to escape Herod's bloody plot to kill him. It is a promising sign for us today that we are gathered here together online because it says that we too are drawn to Christ's visible light, visible in the darkness of our world. The hope and promise found in Jesus draws us past the hate, fear, and anger that brings division between us and instead leads us past the darkness and towards the source of restoration healing, and the promise of a return to right relationships with each other. The fact that our ears are open to that hope demonstrates that we are still drawn to the message of the good news. The light of the gospel draws us past the empty offerings of the world's materialism and self-centeredness. It draws us past the broken politi political systems that has been boiled down to an us against them. Those with earthly power can be convincing, but God wants us to discern the truth. It was God's grace at work that ultimately helped the wise men see past Herod's deception and allowed the wise men to be drawn to the truth that they so well-meaningly sought. And it is God's grace that has brought us here to celebrate the light of Christ that shines for all the heavens and the earth to see. It is God's grace that has drawn us together today and that leads us through the brokenness of our world. I would now like to invite us to join together in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. We pray for your church. We pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, Anne, our Metropolitan, Linda, our Primate, Chris, our National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our Diocese of Huron, we continue to pray for the parishes in the Saugeen Deanery, for their clergy and people. Make your church one body and send it to proclaim the boundless riches of Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of grace, we pray for this creation. Send rain where it is in need and sun to dry what is drenched. Free all living things with your abundance. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the nation. Make your wisdom known to rulers and authorities. Defend the needy and rescue the marginalized. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray today for your comfort in the lives of those who need it most. You know the circumstances we face and you understand our hurts and our need for peace and for comfort. Thank you for being our comforter and our peace. In our prayers in this parish this week, we pray for Gwen, Margaret, Brandy, Bob, and Miriam, Gwen, Margaret, Mary, Max, Pat, Jen, Jason, Brenda, Annette, and Mary Rose. We also continue to pray for those experiencing continuing long-term health concerns in our parish. Touch all those who are facing unbelievable challenges right now and ease the burden of all those whose arms are sagging beneath the weight of heavy loads. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for your blessing on all who share in the life and work of our church and parish, in the ministry of word, prayer, and sacrament, in teaching, learning together, and pastoral care, the community and those in need, sharing 
and cooperation. We pray for all members of the congregation that in their life and work, they may advance your kingdom and bear witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for those who have died in faith. Unite us with them forever and strengthen us through their witness. We give thanks for the life and witness of Jamie Oakes and we pray for the repose of his soul. We pray for his grandmother, Sylvia Zawalski, his parents, Jim and Donna Oakes, and Diane and Steve Smith, and all of Jamie's extended family during their time of grief. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.